Eternal rest grant them, O Lord, and fill their souls with splendour. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Very warm welcome to our celebration of Remembrance Sunday. Today we gather together remotely to celebrate the Eucharist, praying especially for all who have served their country in war and who have given their lives for the sake of others. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son, having conquered death, should pass over into the realms of heaven, grant, we pray, to your departed servants that with the mortality of this life overcome, they may gaze eternally on you, their Creator and Redeemer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. David intoned this lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. Your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice, the daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, anointed with oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson in luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. This is the word of the Lord. We will call on the name of the Lord. May the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you, send you help from his sanctuary, and strengthen you out of Zion. We will call on the name of the Lord. May we rejoice in your salvation and triumph in the name of our God. 
May the Lord perform all your petitions. We will call on the name of the Lord. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will call only on the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. We will call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the Revelation to John. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Just over 80 years ago, during his Christmas message to the nation in the early months of the Second World War, King George VI quoted these lines in his address to the people. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness, 
and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. The poem entitled God Knows was written early in the 20th century by Minnie Louise Haskins and according to one royal biographer was given to the king by his 13-year-old daughter, now Her Majesty the Queen. The lines to many seemed particularly appropriate at the outset of what was to become the long and hard-fought Second World War. Although war had been declared early in September in 1939, the first eight months are often referred to as the phony war, as there was little military activity during that time. The words the king chose for his first wartime Christmas address echo many of the themes which we continue to associate with Remembrance Sunday. Trust in God in the face of the unknown and an uncertain future. The words which the king chose are particularly notable for they can be applied to all faiths and not just to Christianity. He spoke to a global audience at the onset of a global conflict, the like of which has never been seen before or since. As there was no way to know how things would turn out, it was even more vital to profess trust in God. As St John Henry Newman writes in his hymn, Keep thou my feet, I do not ask to see the distant scene, one step enough for me. Another aspect of our remembrance tired observances is that of commemoration. We commemorate all that has been done for us in the past and we give thanks for the many who sacrificed so much for our freedom today. When I was at school in the 1980s, it was generally thought that these remembrance ceremonies would come to a natural end as the veterans of the two world wars kept their last remembrances of their colleagues and in their turn departed this life. But in fact, the opposite has been the case. If anything, perhaps because of more recent conflicts in Iran, the Gulf and elsewhere, there has been an increase in the momentum behind our national acts of remembrance. This year, our remembrances have largely moved online as we once again face an uncertain future, forced to fight the enemy of sickness and pandemic rather than any human one. The man who stood at the gate of the year to 2020 gave us no clue as to what we have had to endure and experience in these past eight months or so. But there remains a necessity to honour those who have died in the past, and that will be tinged this year by the commemoration of those who have lost their lives through the pandemic. While we mourn their loss, we also give thanks for those who have worked so hard in our health service and for all the frontline workers who have done so much to maintain some sense of normality in these days. It is easy to forget that even in the middle of the most horrendous wars the world has ever seen, ordinary life somehow had to carry on. Amid the deprivations of war, people had to get on with going about their daily lives as best they could. For many, this was a time when their faith was tested and a time when they relied most especially upon their religious upbringing and the practice of their Christian faith week by week. For us as well, when we face difficult or uncertain times, whether in our own personal lives or at times of difficulty for our nation or for the world, it is important for us to hold on to our faith in God, 
to place our confidence in him. At this time of renewed lockdown and restrictions on our daily lives, the message to turn to God in prayer is as important as ever. The Archbishops of Canterbury and York have desig designated this month as a month of prayer for our nation and the world. And they are encouraging as many people as possible to pause each day at 6 p.m and offer a short prayer to God. In doing this, we join our prayers with the prayers of those who have struggled most this year, and also those who survived wars and conflicts past, in our heartfelt desire together to seek for a long and lasting peace throughout our troubled world. For the Lord shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. May God give peace. For civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. May God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. May God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you 
those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, on the sacrificial offerings we present to you for the souls of your servants, and just as you bestow on them the dignity of the Christian faith, grant them also its reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, giver of life and conqueror of death. By his death on the cross, your Son, Jesus Christ, offered the one true sacrifice for sin, breaking the power of evil and putting death to flight. Through his resurrection from the dead, you have given us new birth into a living hope, into an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled and unfading. The joy of resurrection fills the universe 
and so we join with angels and archangels and with all your faithful people evermore praising you and saying holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace together with Glyn, our bishop, and all who minister to your people. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your eternal presence. Send the Holy Spirit on us all and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St Hilda, St Thomas, and all your saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, 
grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God sent his only begotten Son into the world, so that we might have life through him. Let us pray. Through these sacrificial gifts which we have received, O Lord, bestow on your departed servant your great mercy, and to those you have endowed with the grace of baptism, grant also the fullness of eternal joy, through Christ our Lord. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Let us remember before God and commend to his safekeeping those who have died for their country in war those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, 
and all who have lived and died in the service of the peoples of the world. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. <laughs> and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, 
from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life. Hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Fulfil in them the purpose of thy love, and bring us all with them to thine eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, who dost stretch forth thy mighty arm to strengthen and protect the armed forces, grant that meeting danger with courage and all occasions with discipline and loyalty, they may truly serve the cause of justice and of peace, to the honour and glory of thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.